Hey folks, I'm Grimwit. This is Fine Sweeper. So let's get back to business of teaching you the ins and outs of Minesweeper as I quickly run out of patterns and tricks to show you. I feel I didn't properly explain this pattern, so let's revisit it. Let's call this the 2-1 pattern. If you have a straight line of three spaces, with a 1 on one side and a 2 in the middle, then the tile opposite of the 1 must be a mine. It's the what-if game again. If this tile were not a mine, then this tile could not be a 1. And here's a quick reminder of all the patterns we know so far. The 1-2-1 one, one pattern. The 3 tower. The 2-1 pattern. And I'm going to call this one the mole hole pattern. Moving on. So that's that four right there sort of makes a three tower. Much of the game honestly is just counting where the tiles could be. It's pretty obvious a lot of the times where the mines are. It's just the sum of the times that kills your game. And of course, as the levels of Fine Sweeper go on, the number of times you might be wrong gets greater and greater, and you lose more and more lives. Simple stuff. There we go, easy peasy. The first move in Minesweeper is always a good move. By which I mean, um, just the way it randomizes, you never accidentally hit a mine the very first time you click. I think all the randomizing actually happens before you, or I should say after your first click. There's a three tower. Making everything else pretty obvious. There we go. So let's talk about odds. There will be plenty of points in Minesweeper when there's no logical way to know where the mine is. In most cases it turns into a 50-50 chance. But when in doubt, look for points where you have a smaller chance to hit a mine. This 3 is next to 2 mines and 4 unknown tiles. That means that one of these four tiles is a mine, which gives us a 75% chance of safety. A 1. And what does that tell us? Well, since this 1 tells us that this and this tile might be a mine, then all the other tiles next to this 1 are safe. And the rest is guesswork. Here's hoping we get lucky. Some interesting notes about Minesweeper. It was created by Kurt Johnson to teach people how to use a mouse, left clicking and right clicking. It was eventually ported to Windows by Robert Donner. It was officially released in 1990 as Microsoft's Entertainment Pack 1. So it was always included as a kind of form bundled with Microsoft products. This isn't a pattern, just a way of thinking. In Minesweeper, one tiles are your friends. Here we have a two and a one next to each other. The two covers this, 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 and this tile. This one tile here, it can only be this, this, or this. So all other neighboring tiles must be safe. So as far as Fine Sweeper is concerned, I actually know very little about why this game was created. 
I should probably do a little more research in the developer f uh, pixel prophecies. The most I can tell you about them is that their uh, their motto it basically means all truths are born of pixels. Guy must have a pretty major hard on for Minesweeper though. In fact. Think about it. How did they get the licensing for this? Can you license Minesweeper? I don't think it's public domain. Huh. I'll have to look into that. I have a tendency to right-click too quickly. One of the nice things about Find Sweeper is it uses the right-click a lot, and you can accidentally mark a mine, which isn't as damaging as accidentally setting off a mine. Come on, it's right there. All right. There is some frustration in watching myself play in the past. Because of the mindless nature of Minesweeper, um, I find myself doing it a lot of times with uh, something running in the background. Usually other Let's Plays that I'm not terribly interested in but still want to finish. I don't know if other people are like that. Or if I'm listening to podcasts. In fact, I'm almost always listening to podcasts. Doesn't matter which one either. Radio Lab, um, the Podcraft, or Witch House Media, Night Vale, what have you, Lore. I don't know if anybody knows about Lore. It's a good podcast. Yep. Gripping. Probably sh should have should have thought of something more to say in a in a game where you're just looking at a guy clicking on numbers. Oh well. I didn't promise I'd make it interesting. This is a good example of subtraction. As I mentioned last episode, if a number tile is next to a mine, it's a good idea to try to think of that tile minus the number of mines next to it. This three tile is next to two mines, three minus two making it a one, and this two tile is next to one mine, two minus one making it a one as well. With two one tiles next to each other, we can figure that this third tile is clear. Much of the time when I'm pausing, I'm subtracting mines from the number tiles to find a pattern that I recognize, such as the 1 2 1 or the mole hole. Do remember, the 1 tiles are your friends, most of the time. I think that about wraps it up for this particular episode of Fine Sweeper. I'd like to thank you for watching. Hmm. Hmm. Nope, not that one. But fortunately, we have an extra heart. So that's it for this episode. We can't have too many more episodes left of the Fine Sweeper series. There's not much more to cover. I, as we get on, I guess I'll be using more and more tricks in tandem. In any case, I hope to see you next episode, and thank you for watching. And, uh, go play some Minesweeper. <laughs>